All right, morning. Uh, so today we're going to talk about some different uh, swing variations and why we use the swings that we use when we use them. Um, so we're going to go through a little progression. And Maggie doesn't chew up all of our vegetation uh, during this video. That'd be a good thing. Um, so we're going to start with a two-hand swing. Then we're going to move into some one-arm swing options. Then we're going to look at some double swings. So first, the two-hand swing. And this is going to be a quick hitter on all of these, so I've posted kind of in-depth videos on how to learn to swing in the first place. And this is just kind of a quick recap, so if you need that, go there first. I'll put that in the, in the post as well, so you can find that. Basic two-hand swing is just here, bell in front, back nice and flat, swing the bell back, and drive it out. The hips. And if I really connect those hips, the bell flies out in front. I like to start here with people. I feel it's the easiest place to begin. They can kind of get the motion, find their hips, and then we can move on to some other variations. Now from there, I like the single arm swing, and we're going to do some right and some left, and then we're going to play around with maybe some hand to hand. Same drill, uh, just a little more advanced. And I would use this, uh, obviously, when the two-hand swing is looking pretty good, uh, but then also when somebody's ready to transition into other drills, like cleans and snatches, and we can start doing some, some complexes or a series of movements, and just kind of give the workout some, some fun and variety. So, <clears throat> so that is when we get into the single arm swing here. And the setup is really the same. Now you'll notice there's gonna be a little bit of rotation involved in my trunk. I can fight that, and I can be really rigid, but I don't feel like there's and a need to be overly rigid with this movement. So if there's a little rotation in the spine, not a big deal. Uh, just kind of feel it, go with it. Make sure when the hand comes down, we connect the arm to the hip, and then when we shoot it out of there, the, the arm is connected, and we drive it off with, uh, with the hip. Uh, so we don't want to get the bell out in front and then try to lock that out. It's just really not going to go anywhere. So, so what we're going to do, I'm going to turn the bell so it's angled, I'm going to put my thumb over the index, swing back, and I can switch. And I can get fancy. kind of your basic one-arm swing options. Uh, do a series on the right, a series on the left, and then of course the hand-to-hand, -hand, which might be right, left, right, left, right, left for five or ten reps, something like that. So this is kind of the basics. Uh, once we kind of got the hips going, then we can move into heavier weights um, or more of a, I guess if you want to say a strength type development. And so then we can do some double work. Uh, so I got a couple of different weights here. We're going to do uh, a couple doubles in, in between the knees and then we're going to do a couple doubles outside uh, the knees and we'll talk about kind of why. Um, now if I want to use my double training to carry over to like a, a traditional lift, like a long cycle double you know, clean and jerk or just double cleans, then I'm probably going to be more suited or better suited to do some work in between uh, the knees. Um, now, I, I will say that people with a kind of a shorter frame tend to do better with between the knee movements. Uh, people with longer legs, longer frames tend to like kind of the, uh, the outside the knee variation. So uh, here's the in between the knee double swing. The concept is still the same. We're still going to swing back into the hips. Uh, we're still going to connect the hips, drive the forearms off the pelvis, and then get that extension at the top. Um, again, I'm going to angle the weights or the bells, so they are not here, but pointed back. So, so this kind of motion here is kind of where my hands are. So I get myself set, get my fingers locked in place, swing back. And then finish in the front. 
So, that type of swing, excellent for, for hip drive, hip strength. It also transitions very well into uh, the uh, traditional long cycle. All right, now let's look at another variation where we're going to go outside the legs. Uh, and this is a drill that, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with kettlebell training, uh, Mike Mahler talks a lot about this drill. It's a great drill. Uh, again, taller guys tend to like this. I, I'm still kind of using this as more of a strength development, so we're going to do double bells. Uh, and then uh, the feet are going to be close together. So not necessarily touching, but just comfortable. Now you will notice if you have really tight hips, you're not going to like this movement necessarily because the feet are closer. It's a deeper hip flexion than, say, this pattern here where I'm shooting my hip back. Not quite as much flexion or bending at the hips. I really got to get into my hips deeper here. So if you don't like this and you're not quite sure why, it might be a hip stiffness or something along those lines. Um, but basic setup is uh, bells in front. We're going to angle them in just a bit. Again, I'm going to grab on the inside of, of the, the corner of the handle. What are you doing, Maggie? Come back. Back up. Back up. Take a hike. So I'm going to angle those back. I'm going to swing the bells back behind me and then bring them up to ideally chest level if I can get them there. Um, if not, uh, then that's okay. We'll work toward that. But So I'm here. Feet set. can see much deeper hip bending and these transition nicely into like say a double snatch some other movements so I like those last two variations for somebody who's obviously a little further along in the game and maybe a little stronger with the bells so give those a shot let me know what you think let me know what questions you have uh, as far as maybe what one is best for your workout or where you're at in your training. Um, and then we'll go from there. Thanks a lot.